Hey everybody, welcome to the 6th grade podcast. This is Miss Brown. I'm joined by Miss Canaria and Mr. Gornto. We're going to talk about air masses today and the different kinds of fronts. So let's get started with air, air masses. Um, air masses have two characteristics, temperature and humidity, and that's all based on where they form. So if we look at the humidity levels first, if it forms over water, it's going to be wet, and that's called maritime. If it forms over land, it's going to be dry, and that's called continental. If we look at the temperature, we're going to have two characteristics there. One polar, meaning that it forms near the poles, and we've got tropical, meaning that it forms near the equator, and that's going to be warm. So looking at the different locations, these are where these different air masses form. So that's where they get their characteristics on whether it's going to be warm, cold, wet, and dry. And it's when these air masses meet. So we have a cold air mass here, and we have a warm air mass here. It's when these two air masses meet that we have a front. And that line right there, that's the front. Just that line right there. Um, and we have different characteristics based on the, the kind of front that it becomes. And the front forms depending on which air mass is the stronger. So when you think of a front, you need to think of a fight. The two air masses are fighting for uh, which one is going to be stronger. So with a cold front, cold front just means that the cold air mass is going to be the stronger air mass, and therefore it's going to move in. Cold air is denser, so it's going to move under the warm air, kind of push and displace the warm air. You're going to get thunderstorms along with cooler temperatures following. If you look at this part of the front, this is showing with the direction that it's going. So if I look at this, I know that the front is moving in this direction. Therefore, this is the cold air, and this is going to be the warm air mass. So remember, this is the boundary right here. So if this is the boundary between two air masses, I know that this is my cold air mass here, and this is my warm air mass here. So the cold air mass moves in, pushes the warm air mass up, it gets underneath of it, brings thunderstorms, and then cooler weather. The next type of front is a warm front. In this case, the warm air mass, which would be here, because again, it's moving in this direction. This would be the warm air, and this is the cold air mass. The warm air is stronger, it moves over the cold air mass, and then moves down, overtaking the cold air. This is going to bring drizzly rain, and it's followed by warmer temperatures. Again, if you look at this area right here, you're going to see the direction the front is moving. And then all you have to do is know, okay, this is a warm front, so the warm air is on this side, and the cold air is on this side. Let's go ahead and look really quickly at stationary fronts. Um, the stationary front is, it's, well, it's similar to the other fronts in that it's got two air masses coming in towards each other. But the difference is that neither one of the air masses is really stronger than the other. So they're kind of just kind of stuck at like a deadlock war where neither one is pushing the front in one direction or another because neither one is stronger. Also, you notice here that the warm air is not necessarily rising um, quite so rapidly or even at all as it did in the other air masses. And that's, again, because it's not being forced up. It's not being forced up above the cold air mass because neither one of them is stronger. So it doesn't really move. It can cause... Um, an extended period of cloudy and rainy weather. Um, mostly because, you know, that front doesn't move. If you are living right here, it's going to be rainy for quite a while. Okay, so let's look at the symbol now. Um, notice that the on the symbol, the warm and the cold front symbols are on either side of the frontal line. And that's because it's not showing a direction that the line is moving. The, on the other fronts, they were on the side that showed the direction of the front. This one, it's not moving, so it's, it's showing that by showing the, the symbols on both sides. We do know that because this warm front symbol is on this side, that the warm air mass is going to be here, pushing in this direction, and that the cold symbol being on this side means that the cold air mass is going to be here, pushing in this direction. So even though the front itself is not moving, we can still figure out which side of the front that each of the air masses is on. All right, so the last one, and probably the most confusing, is the occluded front. And this is when um, there are multiple air masses and the warm air mass gets caught in the middle of two cold air masses. So really what's going on here is you have a cold air mass here and this warm, it was down here, this was warm down here. But then as this other cold air mass came in, in this direction, it pushed and shoved and caused that warm air to go up. So now those cold air masses are touching each other down on the ground and this warm air mass is being shoved up higher to the atmosphere. And what's happening is when it's being shoved up higher to the atmosphere, it's going to cause 
a, um, a pretty good amount of precipitation, mostly because all of that warm air is being forced up higher to the atmosphere, cooling it down, which causes the water vapor to condense, creating more precipitation. So um, what we expect from an occluded front is we do expect a, a fair amount of precipitation, either snow or rain. Okay, and we also um, expect cool temperatures down on the ground either side. It doesn't matter if you're on this side or this side. Both sides are going to experience cold temperatures before and after the front moves through. Okay, so also looking at the symbol here, you notice that it's purple, which I think is awesome because purple would be a mix of blue and, and red. So this is kind of like the mixture of a cold front meets a warm front, which is what causes the occluded front. So we're going to have a purple um, symbol that has the circles and the triangles for both the cold and the warm front. So even so with this, we can tell which direction the front is moving um, because of the way the symbols are pointing. So we know that the front is moving that direction. This would be a cold air mass and this would also be a cold air mass. So one last uh, graphic to kind of help you understand that better. So this right here would be a cool air mass. Okay, it's in front of a warm front. This would be a warm air mass in, fr in front of the cold front and this is going to be a cold air mass. So as this cold front moves through, it's going to squish this warm air higher into the atmosphere, and as it squishes closer and closer, it turns into this occluded front here. Okay, so um, let's look at this map and just kind of try to figure out where we would find the different air masses according to the different fronts that we have. So, Mr. Gornto, um, I'm first going to look for warm air masses. Um, Let's look at the uh, stationary front. Where would you think the warm air mass in the stationary front be? The left side or the right side? The right side. The right side. Okay, so this is going to be a warm air mass here. Okay, which Ms. Brown would make the other side of it be a? Cold air mass. Okay, so that's going to be a cold air mass. All right, so let's go back and look over here at our cold front first. Which side of this cold front is going to be cold air? Ms. Brown? The left side. Okay, so we've got a cold air mass here which means on the other side of that front we've got, Mr. Gorto? Warm air mass. All right, and then I'll go ahead and answer for this last one. It means that we've got a cold air mass here. And then knowing what we know about occluded fronts, it's going to be cold on either side of the occluded front there. Okay. So let's look at the last thing we want to look at is the type of precipitation. So let's look here at this kind of front. What kind of precipitation is that going to be, Ms. Brown? Well, since it's a stationary front, it's not going to move, so we're going to have long days, several days of rainy weather. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of rainy weather there. Okay, Mr. Gornto, what kind of precipitation here? Uh, we're going to probably have thunderstorms uh, and rain. Okay, and here we're going to have some kind of drizzly rain. It's not going to be quite as hard as what we would expect at the cold front. And then lastly would be our occluded front, which would bring a um, pretty high amount of rain as well. Okay, so hopefully this quick review will help you with the types of fronts. Um, make sure that you know where the air masses are on either side of each front and the type of precipitation that it brings, and you should be fine with fronts and forecasting. All right, have a great day.